Uh, good morning to all of you. Um, I really hope that you must have uh, learned something from uh, Unit 2, Lecture 1. Uh, if you remember, we have dealt on uh, what are the uh, issues related to demand and uh, supply of water resources. So, <clears throat> in this lecture, <clears throat> I'll be uh, sharing on uh, what is surface water and uh, what are what is surface water volume and how to measure this volume so surface water volume and flow and uh, in next video slide I'll be talking on what is aquifer and aquifer performance and the third video will be talking more uh, mainly on groundwater and uh, wetlands in around the world and uh, brief talk on wetlands in Bhutan. So let us uh, first look at uh, the learning outcome. So three things to learn from this lesson. One is uh, uh, what is surface water volume and flow. Another one is what is aquifer and uh, what is aquifer performance. And the last one is groundwater and wetlands and how are they related. So you need to basically know the relation between groundwater and uh, wetland. So let us begin again. Um, the first uh, is on surface water volume and uh, flow. So uh, all of us know that uh, what is <clears throat> the surface water is basically the water which is on the surface of the planet or surface of the earth, uh, which is neither on the atmosphere, obviously, and which uh, neither is uh, uh, beneath the surface as water table, nor it is uh, in the uh, aquifers uh, in the form of groundwater. So surface water is basically the amount of water that's on the surface of the earth naturally replenished through uh, factors like precipitation and uh, others like uh, um, um, melting of glaciers and ice. So let us look at what exactly surface water volume and flow. Uh, hydrologic cycle really explains what uh, exactly surface water is. So surface water is those uh, runoffs like rivers, streams, lakes, ponds, oceans, which are <clears throat> basically not infiltrated inside the uh, soil surface, which are not remaining as, as a groundwater, but uh, they're just on the surface. And uh, again, hydrological cycle explains that it is basically replenished through factors like precipitation and uh, melting of uh, glaciers and ice. Basic uh, definition on uh, surface water is water in a river, lake, or freshwater wetland. So this is the definition of uh, uh, surface water. And uh, like I said, uh, uh, surface water is uh, naturally being replenished, replenished through factors like uh, Precipitation is the main uh, factor that leads to rep replenishment of uh, surface water. But also, if you look at the the contribution that's being made by um, uh, glaciers and icebergs, are also one of the factors contributing to replenishment of uh, surface water. But however, uh, uh, factors like uh, <clears throat> factors like uh, <clears throat> going this. Uh, uh, runoffs to oceans and uh, getting evaporated, getting evapotranspired transpired from uh, plants uh, and uh, sipping, the sub sipping the surface water to uh, subsurface uh, uh, areas in a form of uh, a water table and remaining in the form of groundwater are the main uh, 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 natural loss of uh, surface water. So basically two things here. <clears> the <throat> one is surface water is being lost, lost from um, uh, <clears throat> factors like uh, going to ocean, um, evaporation, evapotranspiration and uh, uh, percolation or in, percolation and infiltration inside the soil uh, surface. So, And uh, the other thing is that the natural replenishment of uh, surface water is mainly through uh, uh, a factor is specifically uh, the precipitation. Um, <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
surface water is uh, the water which is remaining uh, on the surface again but uh, surface water flow is the water flow that uh, is usually in continuous movement uh, uh, on the upper channel open channel or on the runoff uh, beds so basically uh, when we are calculating water flow uh, surface water flow we <coughs> usually define uh, that with the term called a discharge so discharge is uh, uh, usually the one uh, quantification of the surface water flow and uh, it's usually the volume of uh, the water per uh, unit time so uh, for example if you are uh, if you are measuring a volume of a river so uh, surface water of river or like uh, surface water flow of river then basically you are measuring the discharge of river and the discharge of river is basically the volume of river that's uh, that's flowing as a particular period of time so you can note the time one second or like uh, 10 sec uh, 10 seconds or one minute or 10 minute or one hour within one hour what's the volume of uh, river that's being uh, uh, flowing uh, on the river bit that's the discharge or that uh, in simple term it's the surface water flow um, <clears throat> like I said I usually measured in uh, volume uh, per unit time um, uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, measurement units one of the measurement unit is cubic feet per second uh, ft uh, cube per second and uh, others other uh, <clears throat> normally standardly used one is uh, cubic meters per second so that's also known as uh, cubic per second so cubic meter per second is the uh, discharge uh, measurement unit standard uh, used by uh, most of the countries most of the places most of the measuring uh, systems uh, the most important thing about a surface water flow is that uh, it is one of the uh, uh, measurement uh, technique to let us know what are the sediments that are going in the surface water and also uh, what are the chemical com uh, components like uh, chem chemical components that are flowing in the surface water so uh, basically um, <clears throat> basically there are around uh, four to five different ways to measure surface water and these uh, uh, measurements uh, are the measurements that I'm going to tell you the measurement me methods that I'm going to tell you are basically for small streams and if you are talking rivers small rivers but if you're looking at very large river and big river I think these methods are not applicable so springs small streams small rivers applicable the first method that uh, we use to uh, measure or surface water flow is known as uh, container uh, method or you can also see as bucket and stopwatch method so in this method what uh, what we, uh, we are going to do is uh, basically um, what we are going to do is uh, basically if you have a bucket if you know that the bucket is uh, five uh, liter and uh, uh, you bring this bucket near the stream so bucket is over here and bucket is five liter so this is bucket now so one, one thing that we looked at is bucket now another thing is stopwatch so as soon as you take the bucket to the uh, uh, the stream or the spring uh, discharge area you uh, hold the bucket and uh, count the time by stopping the watch so you turn the stopwatch preset ready and you basically going to need two people one one person is going to hold the bucket and um, receive the water and look at the water where the, uh, when it is filling uh, at the top and the other person is going to look at the time so one two three the person is going to get to the uh, get to the uh, spring discharge and the other person is going to look at the time so uh, if it is if it's taking uh, to fill the bucket around uh, like 30 seconds so the discharge uh, measurement through container method is 
50 liter per uh, 50 liter in 30 seconds so 50 lit uh, sorry uh, 5 liter in 30 seconds is the discharge so the discharge is 5 liter per 30 seconds so per second you need to calculate yourself so if it is uh, uh, 5 liter per second then what will be uh, the quantity in 1 liter so that's the discharge measurement through first method the second method is uh, through uh, water level change method usually it takes place when we have uh, a tank which is next to our uh, water discharge or surface water flow and um, the small surface water flow i mean not a very large one like springs and small streams so if you really want to study the uh, surface water flow of uh, uh, surface water flow of that stream or spring uh, spring what you will do is uh, you have uh, the known measurement of tank this is a tank which you know the measurement and if you know the measurement let the water fill inside the tank and note the time that uh, the tank know the time that the water was received in the tank so if you have uh, if you have uh, if sorry if the initial water in the tank without this spring measurement was around this height let's say uh, five liter was already there and let's say after you connected with that uh, spring or uh, stream discharge you received around three liter so basically the displacement that is taken place or water level change that has been taken place is around three liters total the tank has filled to 8 liters but the change is actually 3 liters from the new discharge or new uh, surface flow so in this case how long did it take to fill 3 liter is it like uh, 30 seconds is it like 1 minute so try to know this time and uh, that's the surface water flow from this method uh, this explanation so you can read yourself the third one is uh, called as uh, water level drop method. So this is usually again uh, true when you know the uh, when when you know the uh, quantity or when you know the measurement of the uh, container or the tank that you want to measure. For example, if you can see over here, this is a tank here or a pond. For example, if you know the <clears throat> if you know the uh, initial volume of the or like actual volume of this tank uh, let's say that uh, you before connecting this with any spring or any uh, stream uh, we take out five buckets uh, five buckets out five buckets buckets all right all right all right so let's say you have taken five buckets out and uh, <clears throat> You know that it's five buckets out now uh, <clears throat> if uh, if you want to really look at the discharge or of a stream so let's say a stream is coming here and let's say uh, now it has joined the pond and you're again calculating the time time is very important because uh, one factor to discharge is volume per time so time is very important so you note on the time now to for this spring or stream to fill this whole thing so if it has taken around like again 30 seconds to fill then it has taken actually uh 30 seconds to fill five buckets you know get the logic because we have taken out five buckets and now five buckets have been filled out 30 seconds so 30 seconds for, for five buckets so is the uh, start uh surface water discharge so uh, uh five buckets or like uh, if five buckets if one bucket is around like five liters then uh, uh one liter then if one bucket is around like five liters then five five is 20, 25 25 liters in 30 seconds so in one second you can calculate the time so that's how our water level drop method works and another the last one is uh, the v node so in this case we construct a v-shaped uh, some kind of like a, a v ship a channel so just at, at one point not the whole channel just at one point where uh, stream will flow from there 
So this V channel, the angle should be 90, not the angles, but 90. And uh, they should have some kind of like measurements. I'll tell you why we have measurements over here. And when we have got the measurements over here, um, we let the uh, <coughs> we let the water flow over the V nose and 90 degree V nose. So uh, we let the water flow over the V nose, and then we'll be using this table. This is a V nose table uh, created by uh, created by a via equation known as uh, Thomson's equation. So uh, if the height of the uh, or the height of the vinoch was around uh, one centimeter then the discharge is around 0 0.88 uh, liters per minute if the height is around let's say our vinoch over here so let's say the vinoch over here is uh, nine centimeter in height let's say so um, if it is nine centimeter in height then the discharge that we have to expect is around uh, to 14 point 0.54. If our vinoch is around uh, 17 centimeter high, then the, the uh, discharge that we have to expect is around 1052.02 uh, 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 <coughs> uh, liters per minute. So that's it on uh, how to measure uh, surface water uh, volume and flow. The most important thing that the reason why we are learning uh, surface water. Uh, flu is because uh, it can really uh, it can really um, uh, uh, it can <coughs> uh, be used in loss of problem assessment uh, it can be used in uh, water uh, shit flowing uh, planning it can be used for assessment of uh, any treatment needed and uh, from lots of uh, 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 from lots of uh, Purposes that we measure flow measurement. One of the best purposes is to measure the environmental flow. So environmental flow is the the flow that is needed uh, to regulate any kind of uh, organisms that's living in aquatic uh, aquatic uh, environment. Uh, for example, um, uh, let's say uh, we have constructed a hydropower dam in this area, uh, like Lois area near Puna Sangchu, we have uh, on the Puna Sangchu river, let's say uh, below the mega farm, we have constructed a hydropower dam. And if we just construct a hydropower dam, if we just make a reservoir over there, we are not leaving any water downstream. So if you do not leave any water downstream, fishes and other aquatic uh, biodiversity will be dying because there is no water. So environmental flow is the limited amount of flow that is actually needed for the survival of the uh, the plants and animals in the aquatic ecosystem so if we know the discharge measurement methods or flow measurement methods then basically we, are, uh, we can quantify what is the volume that's being needed for uh, those animals like fishes and all so for example uh, uh, a fish an adult fish and not just specify the fish right now but an adult fish needs around uh, uh, five cubic meter per second discharge, and uh, if you do not release five cubic meter uh, per second discharge, uh, then what happens is that the dam that we have constructed is basically going to uh, leave those animals dead. So uh, if we want these animals to be alive, then we basically have to uh, release five uh, meter per second. So that's the use of uh, that's one of the uses of uh, flow measurement uh, technique. <clears throat> so uh, specifically, for example, if you have built a hydrobore system somewhere else, then the hydrobore system, this is the dam that we have created. This is the actual uh, 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 reach or actual pathway where uh, we let small amount of or little amount of water to flow through the natural river bed of uh, natural river bed and uh, we need to regulate a uh, standard amount of quantity not to reserve everything in the dam but standard quantity as an e-flow as an environment flow. this has been regulated by uh, national environment commission secretariat uh, and that's been given to uh, dgpc to uh, uh, comply or for their compliance to follow these rules 
So the red ones are the tunnel that goes inside the inside the mountains and uh, uh, inside inside that uh, inside the surface area where uh, uh, water will the water which is damped will actually move from the heat tunnel go to powerhouse um, then give the load to the turbines then it will come out from the tail tunnel and it will meet the again the natural path of the river so in this natural path of the river uh, we need to give little amount of water that will sustain the biodiversity so that is what is actually known as ifro so this is uh, this is a uh, a dam of uh, pala hydropower projects and uh, uh, located in uh, wangchu area in chuka so um, this is located in wangchu area in chuka so what this dam shows is that uh, this is the reserved one and if you see something around in this area uh, let me just scribble this one with this one if you just see something some water some portion of water flowing down beneath the uh, dam that water is known as environmental flow and one of the uses of knowing flow measurement technique is that we can know actually what is the environmental flow that is being flowing through that uh, river bit by any of the method like bucket method like funosh method and all and we can see that oh this dam is not following the environmental flow regulation set by national environment commission secretariat because it's uh, less than like uh, five it's I know, like three or two uh cubics and it it has to follow so the, the, that's one of the uh, applications of uh, knowing uh, flow discharge, uh, flow discharge so I really hope you uh, must have got something else from this one. <clears throat> uh, we'll be continuing with uh, aquifers, aquifer performance and groundwater and wetlands.